Okay, this conversation is for sellers as well as agents, trainers, franchisees, brokers, anybody that hasn't tried an inflated rate of commission on their on their listings yet to see how it works. Now, most realtors will know that a discounted selling broker commission puts you a little bit at a disadvantage. I mean, if you have strict, tight competition in your area and you're going far below the most common rate of commission, I, sometimes that can work against you. Um, so what we want to talk to you a little bit about today is the conversation for your sellers or, or the agents that you're training, if you're a trainer, on how offering a higher buyer broker commission or selling broker co-op, whatever you call it in your area, could net the seller more money, make your listings more saleable, maybe get you higher priced offers, maybe even get you more full priced offers. And this is on any type of real estate, but it works best when you have really tight competition. So for the sellers, we want to create leverage. You know, I get really frustrated by the trainers that constantly give us these 30 year old scripts of you need to justify your value. You need to go through all the things that you know. No. Commission is not justifying your value. Commission is building in leverage for the seller, something they can take away later if they don't get the full price. I'm not sure if negotiating commissions is something that you do often in a downward fashion, but it happens a lot in our market and agents cut commission all the time to put deals together when it gets close to it. So why not start with a higher commission? I recommend 4% to selling broker. And then if you get your full pop, you have to pay a higher rate of commission. Listen, the soft sell when you're headed out the door and you have your four or 5% listing signed in total. And if you spun around on a, on a heel and said, Hey, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, one question before I go, would you pay a buyer broker? That's not me an additional X amount. Uh, or would you pay them 4% if they brought you something close to full price? I think 85% of the time the seller says, hell yeah, full pop. I'm not going to get full pop. I don't think that sellers most of the time list their house with the idea that they're going to get full price. Maybe tens of thousands of dollars are built into that listing price. It, you know, we, oh, I, want, I want to leave room to come down. Well, if there's 2% in there and you've got a 5% listing and you ask them, hey, listen, uh, instead of offering 2% uh, to the selling broker, would you put 4% on it? Uh, then I think you, you've got a good place to start. That's the soft sell. I think most most of our sellers would agree if, that if you're going to get them something close to full price that they would pay more. Now, we've also discussed in many episodes, of, if you've watched, when the best time to negotiate your commission is if, is if you're the seller. The best time when you're the seller to negotiate commission is not when you're listing your house because, well, frankly, you probably don't want the real estate agent that drops his drawers on commissions right off the bat because if he can't stand up for his commission or intelligently speak to you about why or how offering a lower rate than the most common rate in the market could be a disservice to you or could, could make your listing look inferior to the other ones, then he's not the guy that's going to be able to stand up for your money. If he's dropping his drawers on his commission, then he probably isn't the, going to be the guy that holds tight for your dollar. So we want you and your listings to stand out and look better than everyone else that's in the market. And so the guarantee is that you'll have the ability to have the conversation with your sellers or your agents, depending on whether you're a realtor or a seller. Hey, even if you're selling privately, and I, I see, I come up upon this quite a bit when I'm calling FISBOs, are you willing to cooperate with an agent? Almost 100% of the FISBOs are for sale by owners will say yes. Hey, yeah. If you bring me, and my question is, and they will most, mostly offer this, if you bring me my price, I'll pay you 2%. So if you're using a firm, an owner-assisted firm, or you're privately trying to sell your own property, try this. Try offering an inflated rate. If, it's, if you would pay an agent, let's say 4%, which is double the going rate of a discount, in my market anyway, 
to bring you something cl close to full pop, then that's where you want to start. Um, then, as you come down in price, you can say, well, I'll take this if you guys take this. So if you get full pop, you pay a little bit more, but you net more money as well. So the guarantee is this. If you're a realtor, you should be able to get above average rate of commission every time. I take 4%, I offer, sorry, I take 7% and I offer four to the selling broker. I take the three. Now, hey, I'm the king of discounting commissions when it comes down to it. If we don't get full price, I will help my client negotiate to a fair commission, something that nets them, you know, something reasonable. So all new listings will be at 7%. Here's a great idea. Have you got a listing that's been on the market for a little while? Uh, you ring them up. Hey, Mr. Seller, it's me. I know you haven't talked to me in a little while. You know how we don't call your clients as often as you should when there's no, really nothing happening on the property? You're just like everyone else. It's, you're no different. Uh, but you call them up and you say, you know, I, I've got an idea. I want to come by and talk to you about how we could freshen up this listing and maybe, you know, make it look new again. So in my market, a strategy I use sometimes is, you, you cancel the old listing and then you submit a new listing so it comes out as a, a new listing and the market time goes back to zero. So if you've been on the market for 100 days or three months or something like that, then at least it appears like you are not been on the market for 100 days or three months. So can I come over and talk to you about a few ways we can freshen up the listing? Well, I'm not, I'm not giving you a price reduction. That's okay. We won't even talk price. I've got a couple different things and what I do as I go over, I talk about appliances, 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 including them in the list price. The worst offer ever from a realtor is appliances negotiable. That's like, you, you know, immediate possession, uh, 90 to 120 days to be arranged, negotiable. Don't do that. Include the appliances at full price. If you don't get them, you can pull them out. You use them as a negotiation tool. If the appliances are worth ten or twenty thousand dollars, then if you don't get full pop, they don't stay. See, the listing is structured in such a way that it says, if you bring me my price, I'll pay you this and include this and move on this date. And that's another thing we would like to talk about. Immediate possession. It doesn't mean that you're desperate and that you have to sell quickly. It means that if somebody brings you the right money and they want the property right off the bat, that you'll give it to them immediately. It means that if a buyer has their home sold and they are cash, all cash, no mortgage, and they want your house and they want to close in two weeks, you will accommodate them. So usually if you ask your client, listen, if you got full pop, could you move as quickly as possible? If the answer to that is yes, then put immediate possession on the on the listing. And then, so we're talking include appliances at full pop, immediate possession at full pop, and increase the selling broker from whatever you are now to something above what the normal rate is in the market. I know I don't want to be stepping on any toes as far as the anti-competitive people anti-competition people. I'm not telling you to just take 7% listings and fix the price all across the board. That's not it. I'm saying an inflator rate of commission could put more money in the seller's pocket. And if it doesn't, the opportunity for the seller to negotiate later when they have leverage is powerful. So that's what I would do. And you know what? I'm not using this as a trick. I'm not much into tricks. I've been selling real estate for 25 years in my market. Uh, I'm good at it, but I like I love this end of it, the marketing and the promotion of properties. And we've seen how a discounted rate is urban legend with the sellers. They think, you know what? Less commission equals more money for me. Not necessarily. And in fact, almost always, no, a lower commission will not net you more dollars in your pocket, but it will make your listings more saleable and it will give you something to promote. Oh, I love this one. You promote it on the feature sheet. You put 4% to SB. In my market, we call it a selling broker. So at the open house, many, I, you know, I put it in a broad red corner and bold, 4% to SB. And sometimes you get people coming to the open house, a prospect or a buyer that says, hey, what's this 4% to SB mean? 
Well, that's how much we pay your realtor if you bring them in on a deal. Do you have an agent that you're loyal to? Yes, I do. Well, that's their competition. That's their compensation. Oh, well, how much if I deal with you? <laughs> well, in my case, I have a pre-existing uh, deal with my vendors that if I double in the property, I won't charge them 4% because it's designed for a buyer broker to bring you more money. So... I tell them, listen, if I double end it, even if I get you full pop, I'll work for the normal rate or I'll work for a discounted rate. Our normal rate used to be 6%. But I said, listen, here's the deal. If I get both ends of it and we, even if I got you full pop, I'll only charge you 5%. How's that? I'll knock 2% off. When you're at the open house, you could disclose this as, so, I mean, we, by law in Canada, have to disclose a special arrangement that, that we made with the vendor, you know, when it comes to competing offers with another realtor. So it could be, it could be a, um, acceptable to then and there at the open house say, well, actually, I've got to deal with my guy. If I double end it, I'm going to, I'm going to do it for less. I'm going to save him 2%. And if you get a $400,000 listing and a guy thinks 2% of 400, you can pretty much figure out that that's $8,000 right off the bat. And sometimes the buyer will think, oh, well, I'm going to save eight grand dealing with this guy. Now, I'm not telling you to tell the prospect or the buyer that they're going to save money by dealing with you because that's not true. And I often say that to them. Listen, I'm not going to tell you dealing with me is going to put more money in your pocket or is going to save you on the price of the house. But I do have an existing uh, arrangement with my seller that, if I double end it, I'm going to charge them 2% less commission because the bonus is designed for the buyer brokers. Again, this is not about you as a realtor, you know, restating your value and all the things you do. This is actually building in value and leverage for the seller, something that, hey, you bring me my price, I'll pay you really well. But if you don't, a, on the sign back, when you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you leave the bonus in there until the very end. And then on the final sign back, when the, when the vendor says, okay, this is my bottom dollar. This is how much I will take at this commission. Obviously, they've calculated their net. That final sign back goes back to the buyer broker. And then at that point, you can say, listen, this is your last chance at the bonus. If you get it done, you're going to be getting significantly more compensation than a normal listing in the market would be. So get her done and take your four points. If you sign it back again, there's a good chance that you're going to be working for less because my guy is going to want the savings or the difference to come out of the commission. So step by step, tested scripts. I've been doing this for 25 years. I've used 4% for a very long time. Ah, do my clients always pay it? Not always. But you can learn more by going to commissioncoach.com. Disregard the plans that are there. I'm offering this free for a limited time. So it, there will be a pop-up that greets you. If you put your phone number and your email address, we'll work out a time when I can call you. I'll give you all the scripts. This is probably a half-hour conversation, maybe 40 minutes, maybe an hour if you've got more questions. I don't mind taking all that time with you to coach you up. You can take notes. Hey, you can record the conversation. You want to do it on Skype, what have you. I'm easy. It's free. I'm so confident that this is going to work for you that I believe that if I give you the information, once it works for you out in the field, you'll come back and make a donation. Sound fair? Thecommissioncoach.com, real estate at teamniagara.ca is my handle. And if you want to get a hold of me, those are, that's how you do it. And I'm no hooks, no tricks, no, um, hey, I don't spam people. I, I'm not putting you on a mailing list. If you, if you say, I'm good, leave me alone, then I'll never talk to you again. I'll be sad. Thecommissioncoach.com or send me an email, realestate at teamniagara.ca. You can also find us on the Twitter, the fake book, the Instagram, and the YouTube thecommissioncoach.com. On Twitter, uh, we're commish coach, commish coach, C-O-M-M-I-S-H, coach, commish coach, and everywhere else, we're at commish, commission coach, the 
We're the commission coaches for a while. <laughs> okay, I'm done. My mouth is starting to work against me. Have a great day. TheCommissionCoach.com. Talk to you soon.